Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to a re-recorded version of our town hall. Unfortunately, when we initially recorded this on Wednesday, November the 3rd, we experienced some technical difficulties and the file that housed the recording was corrupted, so we weren't able to post it as originally recorded. But Mott and I thought it was very important that we share with you the key information from the town hall, thus the re-recording. Mott, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Vanessa. And thanks to everybody who's taking the time to view this video and to hear our report at our town hall. We've just been thrilled by the unwavering support of the arts and culture community by all of those who are out there supporting RAC. RAC is proud to play its part as partner, advocate, and catalyst while being the leading public funder of the arts in St. Louis. Despite the hurdles created by the pandemic, RAC remains resilient on its journey to full recovery and to full recovery of the entire sector. We know it's been difficult for all of you. And with that, your role is even more essential as together we work to garner support for the arts and our community of artists to make recovery happen. We are so fortunate to partner with an arts community that responds to the call of collaborative action. Thank you for all that you do to keep our art vibrant, relevant, and inspiring. But we also appreciate the role you play as advocates for the arts. As part of the arts advocacy effort, a letter was signed by well over 100 participating arts and cultural organizations and operators across the region. And it was delivered to the mayor and to the county executive seeking 5% of the COVID relief dollars to be distributed in our region. This letter was created by and through the arts organizations and in it, it positions RAC as the trusted source to coordinate the allocation and, distri and distribution of the ARP funds in both the city and the county. We're very appreciative of that support and your confidence. RAC has the governance model, the organizational structure, and the longstanding community relationships to ensure these funds are uh, invested equitably for both the short-term recovery needs and long-term resilience of our sector. Securing these funds, the 5%, would make a huge difference in our community. The arts are vital. They are vital to who we are as a region. They are vital as a major economic engine and the arts are deserving of this critical financial support. RAC will work strategically and we will work tirelessly with our partners to ensure that our elected officials in the St. Louis city and the county understand the value of the arts and culture sector, the value to our residents and its contribution to the economic vitality and quality of life enjoyed by all in this region. We will make a case for the 5%. We are confident that our request fits within the parameters for the ARP funds and that our elected officials will identify meaningful ARP funds to be invested through RAC. You know, it's been an extraordinary time for RAC in so many ways with both staff and commissioners working diligently to serve the celebrated St. Louis arts and cultural community. One of our accomplishments is to have worked with our government officials and have finally seated a full 15 member commission, all with orderly terms and appropriate succession in place. I can tell you it's been a long time since we've been able to make that statement. But more importantly is the stunning quality of the commissioners and uh, that make up the commission today. I couldn't be more excited by the excellence of these individuals. They represent our commitment to making sure that fresh ideas and energy are present. They bring multiple voices and they bring multiple experiences to assure the best thinking is brought 
to our deliberations and thinking and to all of our decisions. Each cares deeply about the arts. And I'm especially pleased to introduce our newest member of the RAC Commission, the only one appointed since we met in March at our last town hall, our 15th. Lyle LaFleur is known as one of the most versatile, talented, and respected creatives in the entertainment industry. Her experiences in the last 20 plus years include television and, exe and film executive, producer, music supervisor, and author of eight critically acclaimed books. Welcome, Laya. I'd also like to note that I will be replaced in January, in January 22 as chair. I couldn't be more excited than to announce that Cheryl Walker has been appointed by Mayor Jones to succeed me. Cheryl has been a commissioner since 2011 and vice chair throughout my tenure and before. She has been a true partner for me and others, bringing her extraordinary wisdom, knowledge and insight to our work. Cheryl recently stepped down as the interim executive director at the Deaconess Foundation. And so we are so fortunate to have such an outstanding individual taking over RAC at this crucial time in our history. On a personal note, I just wanna say what an honor it has been to serve as chair for the past several years. Much has been encountered, but much more has been accomplished. I wanna thank my fellow commissioners for all of their support and pay tribute to the RAC staff who day in and day out demonstrate a level of commitment to the RAC mission that makes us all proud. With that, I'd like to introduce Vanessa. Vanessa is celebrating her one year anniversary as RAC's first president and CEO. She began her role in early November, 2020, just as new projections for very depressed hotel motel taxes were made available. It was not a pretty picture, but Vanessa has come and with great energy and an upbeat attitude, worked closely with staff and the commission to assure RAC's short-term stability and has begun to create plans for the how RAC will recover and flourish. We'll spend the rest of our time going over some of the important updates during this webinar. Vanessa, it's all yours. Thank you, Mont. As I reflect on my last year leading RAC, I wanted to share an image that captures my experience. It has been an awesome year of learning and growth, learning the history and the culture of the organization, learning the arts and culture sector, and engaging with stakeholders across the region. Considering the impacts of COVID-19 on our organization, oftentimes I felt like I'm leading a 36-year-old startup. It has been a roller coaster ride of losses and gains, disappointment and excitement on the journey of this learning curve over the last year. There's an African proverb that says, when you want to go fast, go alone. When you want to go far, go together. My first year has been a success because of the overwhelmingly positive community support I've received. I wanna thank my family, friends and colleagues for their patience and encouragement. I wanna thank the artists and arts organizations for their understanding and kindness extended to RAC as we navigate our financial hardship. I also wanna thank our team members and commissioners for their engagement and trust. As a special thanks, I wanna thank Mont Levy for his leadership and friendship as board chair. I am grateful for his investment of time, talent, and treasure in my leadership journey. So thank you to the whole community that has supported me on this learning journey. Teamwork makes the dream work. I'm getting ready to share with you the progress that we've made since our virtual town hall in March. If you all recall, we had significant staff departures of the 
eight staff, all positions except for the role of president and CEO were displaced in order for us to meet our statutory requirement that not more than 15% of RAC's total revenues can be spent on administrative and staffing experience. So we started this year with significant losses of staff. I am pleased to share that Rita Dillard continued on with RAC effective July the 1st in a new role of business operations manager. Chloe Smith also continued on with RAC effective July the 1st in the new role of grants and programs manager. Leah Sutherland joined RAC first as a consultant in March of this year and as a full-time executive assistant and commission administrator. On August 1st of this year, Liz Dykman joined RAC as a consultant to lead RAC's participation in the Americans for the Arts AEP6 study. AEP6 is the Arts and Economic Prosperity Study that happens every five years that measures the economic impact of the arts and culture sector in our region. When we came to you in March, we shared our financial outlook. I'd like to provide an update on that now. As you can see, things certainly have gotten worse before they will get better. We've seen significant revenue drop-offs from nearly $7 million in hotel motel revenue in 2019 to just over $3 million in revenue in 2020 and right about $2.5 million in 2021. Significant challenges presented by the severe and quick uh, reduction in revenue. If you'll remember, RAC receives 94%, between 94 and 100% of its revenue from hotel motel sales tax. This is our forecast uh, of the impacts of COVID on our hotel motel revenue. As you can see, our actuals in 2019 and the comparisons through 2026. I am personally very excited that next year, 2022, we will see an increase in revenue at the estimated $4.3 million. This is going to be a significant help to RAC as we forward our mission. But you'll also see that we do not expect pre-pandemic revenues until 2026. So we are not out of the clear as it relates to our forecasted revenues from hotel motel sales tax. Each year things will get better, but we certainly are on a path of recovery, which makes the need for 5% of the American Rescue Plan funds that are coming into St. Louis City and St. Louis County designated to the arts and culture sector through RAC. So very, very important. Since our town hall in March, we committed to strengthening our organizational infrastructure. We want to make RAC the best place to work in St. Louis. We reimagined our workplace culture. We executed new HR and IT optimization tools to make our work more efficient and effective. And I am so pleased that we delivered a clean fiscal year 2020 audit. Also in our work of strengthening our organizational infrastructure, we updated and launched a new website. We continue to make improvements to it on a regular basis, but we want this website, rackstl.org, to be the central place where not only our residents of the region, but also visitors to this region will know what's going on in the St. Louis arts and culture community. As Mont talked about earlier, we elevated our commission administration and governance efforts. We have great relationships with the boards and commission offices at both St. Louis City and St. Louis County. And we thank our partners in each of those offices for their support in ensuring that we have stellar governance practices. We have also explored new ways to diversify RAC's funding model. 
we established a resource development task force of commissioners to think about how RAC can diversify its revenue. In an effort to bring new resources to the table, RAC does not want to compete with our grantees. We want to add new resources to the sector. So we've identified four key areas for RAC to pursue fundraising. One is federal, state, federal and state government funds. So in addition to hopefully receiving funds from the city and the county American Rescue Plan funds, we are pursuing grants from the NEA and other federal resources. We also are looking at national foundations like Ford Foundation, Kresge Foundation, and others who are aligned with our values and our work to make application and develop partnerships for funding. We also find individual donations to be very helpful. On our website, we have a brand new support rack feature that allows anyone from anywhere an opportunity to make donations to rack to support our artists and arts organizations. These are fully tax deductible donations. While RAC is a quasi-governmental organization, we are also an independent 501c3. So any donation you make to RAC is fully tax deductible and will go to support artists and arts organizations here in the St. Louis region. And last but not least, board giving. Our board are appointed by the mayor and the county executive. As part of their appointment, there is no required financial contribution. It is a contribution of time and talent. But I'm very honored to say that this board cares very deeply about RAC and have made personal contributions to our mission and our work, especially now during RAC's time of hardship. We are exploring 100% board giving, which helps us as we are making application for national foundation grants, but I'm very honored that our commissioners see the value in RAC and are making personal donations. As it relates to our grants and programs, since we last met with you in March, we were able to maintain our existing grantee payments. Our general operating support grantees received payments at 25% of their original award from 2019, and our program support grantees received 40% of their original award. This was a promise that we made in March, and I'm very pleased that we were able to maintain that through the calendar year, despite the significant drop in revenues. We also finished the first half of our capacity building STL program that we execute in partnership with the DeVos Institute. We selected Blackboard as our grant making platform and we also advanced extensive maintenance measures in the Community Resource Center located at 6128 Del Mar Boulevard. While our building was closed this year, we took advantage of the time to upgrade our HVAC system, to make repairs, and give our building some love. Also with Blackboard, we selected a new CRM tool. I hope you will visit racstl.org and sign up for our regular email communications. It is very important. We have used MailChimp for several years. We are now changing to eTapestry. So if you want to stay current with all of the great news and information happening at RAC, please visit our website at racstl.org and sign up for our communications. There's a button on our homepage. Also this year, we started an ad hoc facilities committee. This is in alignment with our strategic plan, plan which identifies within the strengthening organizational infrastructure area to develop a facilities master plan. So led by Commissioner Jerry Genaria, we have several commissioners who meet regularly to develop the master facilities plan. We've engaged in extensive community research, which is available on our website to understand what our space needs are, not just for the short term, but for the long term, considering the impacts of COVID, 
the requirements of our strategic plan and the needs of the St. Louis region. We will share this data on our website. We plan to have a go forward facilities master plan by the end of the year. As you'll read in the research, a few key points came up from feedback from focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and an online survey. The community asked RAC to provide space for artists and arts administrators to gather and support the broader community in intersectionality work. They want this space to be open, welcoming, accessible, and safe. The community also said that RAC needs to provide space that is pandemic proof to ensure that we can have hybrid meetings, both in person and online, and that the technology supports that. There was also needs identified in the area of mid-sized theaters, rehearsal and storage spaces, and affordable artist studios. Again, you can find the full research report on the Town Hall Recap homepage. Now, what you probably have been waiting for is what is RAC going to do in 2022? As far as our grants and programs, we are going to invest in three ways. We're going to invest in organizations, we're going to invest in individuals, and we're going to invest in communities. I am so pleased to share that in 2022, we will offer general operating grants to our existing cohort in the amount of $750,000. What this means is that the grant payments that are scheduled to be made in March and June will be at 50% instead of 25%. As RAC sees increases in revenues, we are very intentional about ensuring that our grantees benefit most from that. We also will offer a brand new program support grant. We have budgeted $650,000. Our applications will open in late February and grant payments will be made in May. We will finish our pilot program with the DeVos Institute for Capacity Building STL. That pilot will conclude in September, and we will take this upcoming year to determine how capacity building programs will be a staple in our portfolio of programs for artists and arts organizations. For our investment in individuals, it brings me great joy to share that we will offer artist support grants. We have budgeted $250,000. The application will open in late February and grant payments will be made in May. We will host a series of webinars and workshops for both artists and arts organizations that clearly explains how to apply for these grants and the grant review process. Thanks to a generous grant from the, great, from the Gateway Foundation, the Gio Bada Fellowship will return in 2022. Our application process will open in February and our fellowship for college students who are interested in pursuing careers in arts administration will be again in June. This is an eight week paid internship opportunity for college students who are interested in pursuing careers in arts administration. More information about this program can be found on our website at the beginning of next year. Last and certainly but not least, I am pleased to share that the Community Arts Training Institute, our finally known as CAT program, will host a cohort in 2022. We are working to determine timing and format. As it relates to our community investments, we know public art is essential to a community's well being. We have designated $100,000 of our budget for investments in public art. We are also going to host a multimedia campaign to support our cultural tourism partnerships and outreach. We want our residents and visitors to know all of the great opportunities for arts and culture experiences around the region. And then certainly we will do our part to ensure that our arts and economic prosperity study work is fulfilled. We will begin planning for data collection in January 
with the results being announced in July of 2023. We are focused on advancing the strategic plan in 2022. We will embed diversity, equity, and inclusion as outlined in the strategic plan in all that we do, our grants and programs. DEI is not a checkbox activity at RAT. We are serious about it and we will walk the talk to ensure that we are champions, advocates, catalysts, and partners for advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in the arts sector and throughout the region across every sector. And while we will not have a formal arts education program as outlined in the strategic plan, we are very much focused on youth and ensuring that youth are engaged in meaningful arts and culture activities. We will measure our program, our impact through program evaluation, research and data. We are very pleased that Liz Dykeman will work with RAC to develop a new function within RAC for research and data. We want to be known as the go-to place for the latest data and information about the arts and culture sector in this region. And last but not least, we will always do our part to not only build RAC's capacity with hiring new staff and building our internal infrastructure, but also scaling our impact when we receive American Rescue Plan funds from St. Louis City and St. Louis County, we've got a plan to distribute those funds and scale our impact through our existing grant programs of general operating support, program support, artist support, and artist fellowship, which is why these dollars are critical because we can get money in and out into the sector for the greatest impact of the residents and visitors to St. Louis and St. Louis County. This is one of my most exciting announcements for the town hall. We are welcoming new team members. Uh, we were very diligent and frugal this year and planned for next year. And we have new team members who joined us on November the 1st who will help ensure we get all of the work that I just previewed with you done. Nicole Belford joins us as our external relations senior manager. Ann Hobrick joins us as grants and programs senior manager. For those of you who may say, hmm, that name sounds familiar. It certainly does. Ann returns to us at RAC. So we are very happy to welcome her back to a very new and different organization but very pleased that she is with us. Jay Scherter joins us as our communications senior manager. Patia Anderson joins us as a consultant to lead our community arts training institute work. And Shavarie Perry joins us as a consultant to lead our Gio Obata fellowship. So please visit our website, racstl.org and find out all about our new and current team members in the staff section. All of the questions that were posed at the town hall are available and answered below this video link in the Q&A section. We had an amazing turnout at the town hall on November 3rd with lots of engagement, lots of good well wishes. One person even said with a big smiley face and a thumbs up, Rack is back, and I am so thankful for the energy and the enthusiasm of this community and their support for Rack. So please scroll on down and check out the answers to your questions from the town hall. I also want to encourage you to watch our latest video that really captures Rack's work and impact in the community. In 2020, we celebrated our 35th anniversary and not a whole lot of folks were having birthday parties in 2020, but we did not want to miss the opportunity to mark this special milestone. So in partnership with HEC TV Media, we produced the work of art. We premiered the video on November 3rd. It is available on this page with our town hall recap. I encourage you to watch it and share it with your friends. It really tells the great story of the contribution of artists and arts organizations 
in this region and the role that RAC has played in strengthening this region and growing the sector and what we plan to do as advocates, catalysts, and partners. So I thank you so much for watching this re-recorded version of our town hall. I hope you found it useful. If you have any colleagues, friends, family members that are wondering what's happening at RAC, please share this video with them. I hope that you continue to stay safe and have a wonderful holiday. And we'll look forward to having a new town hall in the spring of next year. Thank you so much.